One of the benefits of having a Tesla Powerwall is that if there's a power outage, you are fine. Your house will still run normally and you won't lose any functionality. In fact, that's the main reason why I think people should get them. Financially, most times it doesn't make sense unless you pay a lot for electricity and you don't have solar with net energy metering. I can send you to a link to explain that later, but what I wanna do here in the question I'm wondering is how long can you actually go? How long can you go if the grid were to be down for a day, two days, even a week? Well, that's what we're gonna test right now. And I'm going to switch off the grid and try to go off grid and just live on my power walls for seven days. Let's go. But before we get into how long I can last on a Tesla Powerwall, let's see how long you can last through this ad. Seriously, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Nope, not a joke. They legitimately wanted to support the channel, so I had to check them out. I'm not a big gamer, but when I checked out Raid Shadow Legends, I was blown away by the graphics in the game. The quality is really second to none, and it makes for a really enjoyable experience. If you're curious, this is a free role-playing game that's downloadable to your phone or your desktop. Kale here is one of my favorite champions that I like to play. And it's because of all the different kind of attacks that he's able to use like this acid rain, which actually hits two people at once. And once you level up, eventually you start to get these new champions like this guy here, this crusader level one, who is easily one of my favorites. They're constantly making updates, and just recently they announced the Advanced Quest System and the Artifact Forge, where you can save time and craft artifacts directly. If you use the link in the description of this video, you'll also get 100,000 silver and a free champion. And the champion you'll get for free happens to be this guy, the Death Chanter. Plus, for the next 30 days, you're going to continue to see extra rewards in your inbox, all at no cost to you. So if you're interested, go check them out. And thanks again to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Now let's hop back into it. Here you have my power wall. And when you go into the power flow, you can see essentially we're pulling 100% from the grid right now. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch off the grid right here. And then you're gonna see it flip off and essentially go directly to the power walls. Boom. There it is. So inside there might have been a little bit of a flicker, but now essentially we're living 100% on the power walls. As the day comes around tomorrow, you'll see solar energy actually start to fill those up and we'll run off of that. But we are completely off grid as you can see here in this uh, little power flow diagram. So that's it, we're officially off grid now and I'm gonna to try to go for a full seven days if it's possible. I'm not really sure, but we're gonna give it a go. Now one caveat here in this, to simulate real life. If the grid was really down, we would reduce our energy usage. We're not really gonna do that. You know, we've got two kids at home full time, one's in school, I'm working from home, Jenny's here a lot. So we're pretty busy here. In fact, our energy usage went up about 50% when COVID hit because we were at home all the time. But with that, one thing we're not gonna do is we're not gonna charge our electric cars here because that would absolutely destroy these power walls and not really be a fair test because again, grid off situation. It's not something we're going to really be thinking about. We're going to be trying to conserve as much as we possibly can. So those are the kind of the conditions. And since I've got you here, these are the power walls themselves. This is two Tesla Powerwall 2s with a total of 27 kilowatt hours of backup storage. Now that's plenty to get through the night considering my house, especially at night, averages like 0.7 to 1 kilowatt hour. So plenty to get through the night. But overall, my house is pulling about 28 to 30 kilowatt hours. As I mentioned, we had an increase when COVID hit because we're all here all the time. And my solar panels, which I have 16 of them, don't really generate all of that energy, meaning every day I'm gonna have a little bit of a deficit. We're gonna try to conserve a little bit, but like I said, I wanna see how far we can really go without having to do much different in terms of how we live our life. And I'll be monitoring it day, every single day, and that's what I'll try to report back to you and see how it's going every single day. Okay, good morning. 7 a.m. following day, day one. Had the power walls running all night, still off grid. Let's see where we're at. So one full night at 63% now. Started out at about 98% battery, but looking solid. Sun's gonna be up here any second. Kind of see it behind me coming up. And uh, that will trigger the solar panels, which will start to refill the power wall. 
And basically the idea is if we can get back up to that 90% or so, we should be okay. It should be able to kind of continue doing this day in and day out. But I might go clean the solar panels because it's been a while and it can always help just kind of, you know, clear up some of the dust so some of the sun comes through. All right, so it's been officially one full day now. There's no more solar energy. You can see here that it, we're running entirely on the power walls and that we're at 89%. So the challenge is that at 89%, it's gonna take about 40% to get to tomorrow, which we started at 98% yesterday. So we kind of lost the Delta there is about 10%. However, there was a weird thing today where when it got about 95% full, the batteries, it the solar switched off and we were running on battery even though there was still plenty of solar energy. And what you saw was that the power wall would kind of go down to maybe about 91% or so. And then the solar kicked back on. So there's kind of a weird trick that the gateway is doing. I think it's because the solar converter or inverter needs to actually convert the DC energy to AC energy. So you can't actually charge the battery all the way because the solar won't run without that extra power supplying it. So day one in the books, looking pretty strong, feeling confident. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so day two in the books, 6 p.m. We're at 85, 84% battery left right now. Earlier today, it was about 93% going into five o'clock. Since then, the solar energy is gone. The sun's on its way down, but should be able to make it throughout the day. And again, what I'm seeing is the batteries getting fully charged about midday. Before the day is done, the batteries will hit their peak, which is right on 94, 95%, which means that we should be able just to keep this ball rolling as long as the sun is shining. More to come. All right, good morning. Day three, got my coffee again. Last night I noticed that it dropped pretty quickly after the sun went down. I think we were at 80 something percent, maybe even 90. And like an hour later we were at 50. So waking up day three, we're at 39% left in the power wall, which uh, should be plenty. Uh, sun will be up, nice bright day. So this should you know reach full charge again pretty soon. And uh, overnight, the energy usage, really minimal. See, it's just starting to pick up now. We're getting up and um, as a result, using things, right? So let's see last night if there was anything funny. Yeah, so you can see last night, not a lot going on. Um, a lot of air conditioning that was happening though because it was super hot. Uh, interestingly enough, um, yesterday we had 17.9 kilowatt hours of energy, 15.4, of solar generated and it has these weird little gaps i'm not quite sure what those are and then 13 kilowatt hours from the uh the power wall and of course zero from the grid so still working still cruising along uh thinking we're gonna see them get charged all the way up again today and hopefully keep running but it has started to tick down a little bit right we're starting the day off a little bit less than we had done on after the very first night so Seven days sounds plausible at this point, but we'll have to wait and see. Stay tuned. Okay, day three, officially in the books. We are looking here, let me pull it up, at 68% for the battery, so not good. It's looking really drained compared to what I thought, but not terrible. Should be able to make it through the night just fine. Curious what we'll end up with in the morning and then tomorrow if it'll be replenished. I did notice today that it seemed like there was a lot of energy being used. We did have our house cleaners come, but other than that, it should have been normal. So I expected it to be completely refilled by about one or two o'clock and it did not do so. It got to about 70% and I think that was about it that it actually got to. So not sure if we just used a lot more energy or something was up with the solar, I don't know. But today we're looking at about 68% and we shall see what the morning says. Good morning, day four, the start. We're looking not great today. 26% currently uh, available in the power walls after last night. 
that it's getting close now. Um, the sun was coming up, you can probably tell, and it will be providing solar energy here pretty soon, but 26% isn't much. I think the lowest I'm gonna let this get down is about 10%, and we'll see how the day goes. It's supposed to be bright and sunny again, so it should fill up. Yesterday it didn't, I'm not quite sure why, uh, but you know, family will be home working all day, I'll be doing the podcast, and then I'll be over at the other house, so. Lots of energy gonna be used today. Curious how much we're gonna get out of the solar. And uh, if it works, if we can get back up to 80, 90%, I think we'd be good. But it kind of looks like every day we're losing about 10%. That's kind of the, the delta there between with how much we generate and how much we use. So we'll see, today might be the last day, but day four. All right, guys, we're just at about the end of day four here and it's not looking good. Uh, we still have a little bit of solar coming in, about 0.5 kilowatts. Powerwall is currently sitting at 49% charge, which will probably get us through the night, but that's gonna leave us with 9%. So I'm gonna try to monitor it tonight, uh, see you know exactly what happens and how far it gets us, but today might be the last day. Each day it's looked like we've kind of lost about 10 or 12%, uh, but this jump from last night to where we're at today really seemed to be a big one. I think part of the reason was because it was so hot today that the air conditioning was running a lot with the kids here, so we just used up more energy. Uh, we'll have to do a deep dive later, but right now, not looking good for a full seven days, uh, but you know, should we got through four full days at least, maybe be able to make five, we'll see. Good morning, day five has begun. Right now, we're sitting at 7% battery left, look. So, yeah, not great right now. Um, the sun will be up, it's already coming up as you can tell, but it'll be up officially with some energy hitting the solar panels in probably two, three hours. I don't know if that's gonna be enough to actually get this going. Uh, we may hit kind of critical point below that and uh, I'll keep an eye out if we can make it until the sun comes up. Stay tuned. Oh. All right, that's it. So at 5% today on day five, the battery died. Essentially, I tried to turn my coffee maker on. It was funny, I was actually trying to see how much energy it took and the whole house just, just cut off. So that's how long we made it. Two power walls, 16 solar panels, about 5.3 kilowatt system. If we had a couple more solar panels, we would have been able to make it. The batteries are fine overnight. Basically, the problem is that they don't get refilled enough during the day, so it just kind of ticks off little by little. We'll jump into the studio here in a minute and, uh, and run down the numbers. All right, so back here in the studio, I have some data that I just wanna walk through and kind of see exactly how these past five days played out with the relationship between my power wall, my house, and my solar. So it officially started here at 6.15 p.m. on October 11th. That's when you saw me disconnect the switch there. I actually disconnected from the grid and I went all the way until 7.35 a.m. on October 16th. That is when it actually shut off and then I went and had to flip the switch back on to actually get some power and refuel. So that was the window that I was able to go off grid with my current setup. And this diagram I thought is really interesting because it shows the flow of it in terms of how it actually comes throughout the day, not just a daily total. And you can see again with the home kind of peaking later in the day, that's right around like two or three o'clock it looks like, the solar peaking prior to that around 11 or 12 o'clock, and then the power wall basically being filled up during all those days when the solar's at peak. And then as the solar goes away, the power wall coming online, and then you can see it actually matching one for one the house because that was the only place I was getting that energy. And so for a total for the week, we're looking at 985.7 kilowatt hours used by the house, 839 of which came from the solar panels and the other 146.7 coming from the power wall. So essentially that is the complete breakdown of the energy I used, I consumed, I produced, 
all of it said and done for nearly five days, 4.6 days, 110 hours and some change that I was able to go off grid using my current solar PV setup, my power walls, uh, and actually disconnecting from the grid entirely. So really cool experiment. I'm glad I did it. It was really interesting to learn about this. I think if I had to change anything, I would go back and add a few more solar panels. That way I could actually generate more. It really wouldn't take much, maybe two, three solar panels. The challenge, and this is why I always recommend people get a lot more solar energy than when they get it installed, is because now I don't get that tax credit. Plus, I also can't really find an installer to do it because here's the deal. These guys wanna make money and you don't make money on a little you know, upgrade to a system. And so the company that actually installed mine, no longer interested in working with me, contacting other ones. Again, it's just too small of a project. So the main message though, is that when you're going to get your solar install, and I'll put a link to, down below to see how I got mine, you should, in my eyes, get maybe 20 to 30% more. Honestly, I would maximize as much as you could possibly get because it all counts under that federal tax credit currently, so it's a great buy. And if you kind of bundle it all together, it's just easier, you just kind of one shot, and as your energy needs possibly grow when you get an EV or two, as I did, you'll be covered instead of being in the situation where I'm in where you know I'm not quite meeting my energy needs, and so if we did have a long-term off-grid situation, we would eventually kind of be, uh, be in trouble. So that's it for this one, guys. Uh, if you wanna see more about how I actually got my power walls installed, check out this video over here I did where I actually break all that down. It's one of my most popular videos, so you're bound to learn something from that. Otherwise, don't forget, as always, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching, and I will see you back here in the next one.